It's time again for the Science Bowl. Zoo Parade for Five. What big teeth the hippo has are actually a pair of these. Science Potpourri for Ten. Would a snake most likely eat every day? Every week, Dateline Science for Ten. Why are some elephants wearing necklaces these days? Green things for 15. And now, here's your host, Mr. Z himself, Dave Zarin. Thank you, and welcome to the Science Ball, the science quiz program here in the Prince George's County Schools, where we test science IQs. Maybe you can improve your own a little bit by listening to wonderful students playing our game today. They hail today from Bladensburg and Mattapanai Elementary Schools as we continue our competition. And this is our 36th year of competition as we head toward the championship mount round in just a few weeks' time. All of our teams start out with 50 points apiece, no penalties for incorrect answers, six traditional categories from green things to dateline science, each category, five, 15, and 25 point questions. One of these two teams will answer more than the other and emerge victorious today. Let's meet that first team, and they hail from Bladensburg Elementary School. Would you please say hello to Justin? Justin waved to everybody. He's the captain of the team. He is a sixth grader. This is his third year on the science ball, so he's a veteran. Let's say hello to Zacharias. Hey, Zacharias, also a sixth grader. Nice to have you here, Zacharias. And joining them, last but not least, is Salome, a fifth grader. Hey, Salome, nice to have you on the show today. All right, Bladensburg, if you are ready, let's get started. Are you set? You ready to do this thing? Good. Let's go to the green things category. Three things questions, three questions for you. Here's the one worth five points. The swabs used to probe your nose for any signs of the coronavirus are topped with the fibers of what plant? The same fibers that you find on top of a Q-tip when you clean your ears. Name that plant that the fibers come from. Um, okay, so I know that it comes from cotton. So what do you guys think? Uh, what do you guys think the cotton comes from? Um, That's absolutely right. You got it. Cotton. You got it right at the top. Cotton fibers at the tip of the Q-tip that you use for probing either a nose or an ear. All right. Nice start there. Nice start from your captain there. All right, Justin. Let's go to 15 points in green things. Plants that grow on trellises and other platforms, like grapes, are known as these creeping V-initialed, kinds of plants answer must begin with the letter v a creeping kind of plant they grow on trellises which are platforms sometimes you see them up against the side of a house and they grow against go up it do you guys think it's fiber no that's them oh those would be vines, vines, like grape vines and ivy vines. Okay, let's go to the 25-point question in green things. During the Paleozoic era of geological time, way back, amphibians dominated the earth, along with these kinds of non-flowering plants that have leaves called fronds, F-R-O-N-D-S, and reproduce not by seeds, but by spores. Do you think it might be ferns? Say it again. Justin, do you think it might be ferns? Um, what I think... I heard... All right. You've, you've heard everybody there. Uh, what would you like to say there, uh, Justin? Much. Correct answer was ferns. I thought I heard somebody say ferns there. You got to let your captain know. And Justin, you've got to listen to them. Okay? So if there's an answer there that you think is correct, you're the one who has to say it. Okay, let's go on to the zoo. Let's go to the zoo. For five points, this is an interesting question. This largest of the crustaceans is now... Highly prized by diners and very expensive. You go to a restaurant and order one of these, it's expensive. It was once considered junk food. 
and it was fed to prisoners in New England no more than twice a week since even they demanded something better. Name that largest of crustaceans. When you order it in a restaurant, it's very expensive, but at one time was considered junk food in New England. Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's lobsters. You got it. Lobster is absolutely right. They wouldn't eat them because they thought they were awful. How about that? And today we're paying high price. All right, let's look at a picture for 15 points in the zoo. Here's your visual. The world's second largest fish, you're looking at it, called the basking shark, is like the largest fish, the whale shark, the owner of a huge mouth, designed to catch as many of these tiny P, as in Paul, initial creatures as it can. It's trying to suck up as much of these P initial creatures as it can. They're tiny. I think it's, um, what did I think? I think it's plankton. Yeah, it probably is plankton because whale sharks also eat plankton. Yeah, that's right. You got it right. It is plankton. Absolutely right. If you watch SpongeBob, you know plankton is uh, uh, the nemesis of Mr. Crab. <laughs> Let's go to 25 points in zoo. This is interesting. Raising insects like it, crickets and mealworms for food is much easier than raising cattle or sheep because crickets and other insects, they grow so much faster, they don't waste a lot of energy to maintain their body temperature because insects, unlike us, are poikilothermic. Another way of saying this. Warm blooded? Could it mean cold blooded? Insects are poikilothermic, unlike ourselves. Another way of saying this, as I've heard some insects bandied about there, and Justin, you get to choose. Okay. Um, I think warm blooded. Actually, it was cold blooded. We are warm blooded, we're homeothermic. Insects are cold blooded, like reptiles, they are poikilothermic. Let's let the body system question. We have three more before your first break. Five points. You'll identify with this. If someone tells you something, but you know it's not true or sincere, you can say he or she is paying this kind of service to the topic. They're just moving their what? A body part. They're just moving their what when they're talking and they don't mean it. Moving, do you think they're just moving their tongue? Maybe tongue or mouth. I think it's tongue Talk. because when. Go ahead. I think it's tongue because when you talk, like you, you, your tongue is the one that actually moves. All right, Justin, it's up to you. You know, it's called. They're just moving their lips. It's called lip service. Just moving your lips is the phrase. Let's go to 15 points in body systems. There's a television ad that shows a medication for treating exophthalmia. Some people have bulging eyes, bulging eyes. That can result from problems with this T initial endocrine gland in your neck. Maybe throat? Maybe like the gland in your neck. So a T initial gland in our neck. What's a T initial gland? That's the thyroid gland. The thyroid gland. If sometimes if you see that commercial on television, it shows a woman with bulging eyes, but she wears all different kinds of sunglasses and she keeps taking them off. And uh, there's a medication that can help to reduce that, that the eyes will not be as prominent. Okay, let's get this 25 pointer here to end the first round. This was interesting. There was a medical student recently. She was watching a hockey game and she noticed on the neck of one of the hockey officials, a mole a mark. She warned him that it might be cancer. Turned out she was right. It was this M initial kind of skin cancer. 
The man got treatment, his life was saved, and he gave her $10,000 to finish her degree in nursing. She saved his life because she saw that that mark on his neck was what kind of M initial kind of skin cancer. Mm, what do you guys think? Sure. What do you think? Um, I, I, I'm an initial cancer. I know that there's a lot of cancers that start with a body part, like lung cancer or like a liver cancer, stuff like that. But what's, what's such a, could it be like mole cancer or mold? Zacharias, I really like how you're thinking. You're trying to parse all this. You're absolutely right. There are different lung cancers. There's pancreatic cancer. Uh, there's brain cancer. Skin cancer, the worst kind of skin cancer is called melanoma. Melanoma. And that's what this, this hockey official had on his neck. All right, end the first half with 75 points, which means you got lots of points you can still get in the second half here. All right, coach. Third year guy up there, talk to your team. We'll be back with you in just a couple of minutes. All right, it is now time to meet that team from Mattapanai Elementary School. Would you please say hello to Josh? Hey, Josh, because you waved everybody at home. Nice to have Josh back. He is a veteran of the show. He's played before, as has Nigel. Hey, Nigel, waved everybody out there. Another fifth grader, and Ricky is on the team. Hey, Ricky, nice to have you back on the show here. All right, guys, let's get started. Let's go to the green things category. I have three things, three questions for you. Here's the five pointer. The branches of a tree have what other name that also describes our arms and legs? Another name for branches that also describes arm and a leg. Limbs. Say it again. Limbs. Limb is right, yes. L-I-M-B, limb. Yeah, uh, sometimes it's hard to hear exactly but what you're enunciating there. Good start. Let's go to the 15-point question, and it's a visual, gentlemen. Let's have a look at this picture. You know, uh, water lilies produce flowers that are well above the water level of the pond for good reason. They're living there so that the wind and the insects can perform this process, which can't happen underwater. Pollination. Pollination is correct. It is pollination, correct, yes indeed. Let's do the 25 point question in green things. During the Jurassic period of geological time, we know from the movies that dinosaurs and other reptiles dominated the earth then. Along with the dinosaurs and the other reptiles were these C, as in cat, C initial kinds of trees that includes the pines and the firs and the spruces. Those are all what C initial kinds of trees. It can't be cattle. That's a type of cow. Carbon? Mm. Mm. That, that includes coal. The huh? no, carbon includes coal, so what do you think? I don't know. Uh, let's just go with, uh, I don't know. Okay, guys, uh, you had a chance to talk about, those are called conifers, coniferous trees. They have cones on them, as opposed to deciduous trees that, you know, that lose their leaves. Conifers keep their needles year-round for the most part. Let's go to the zoo for five points. These slow-moving mammals that move only about 40 yards a day are hard to see in the treetops because their fur is usually covered with algae. Sloth. 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 Is it kind of like a right. sloth? Yes, yeah, sloth. It is indeed the sloth. If you saw Zootopia, remember that sloth at the DMV who just couldn't talk any faster. Sloth it is. 15 points in zoo. Animals that sleep through the winter, the hibernators, and those that sleep through the summer, called the estivators, conserve energy by lowering this M initial process in their body, which describes the rate at which they use up that energy. M initialed word. Equal movement, momentum. 
What do you think? I mean, I don't know. Uh, energy and uh, it could be movement, momentum. Momentum? Oh, yeah. Good try. Good try. It's called the metabolism. The metabolism. You get basic, meta the metabolic rate. For 25 points, listen carefully to these big words because if you listen, you'll hear the clue in it. Herbivores like rhinos, giraffes, elephants, and deer are divided into two different groups. One is called the artiodactyls, D-A-C-T-Y-L-S, and the others are the perissodactyls, D-A-C-T-Y-L-S. It determines what group you go into on whether those animals have an even or an odd number of these body parts. What is it? Oh, teeth. Think about an elephant. Think about a giraffe. Think about mm -hmm. a, a rhino and a deer. They're different in that some have an even number of these and some have an odd number of them. Teeth? Not Are teeth. they teeth? No. Not teeth. Good try. Uh, dactyl refers to like a pterodactyl is like a, a, a winged foot. Toes is the right answer. They have an even or an odd number of toes. That's what we were looking for. That was a tough one. Body system for five points. If you want to say something that others shouldn't hear, you might be told to bite your what? Tongue. Bite your tongue. Exactly right. 15 points. Dating back to the Civil War, the military award still given to soldiers who've been injured in battle is the Purple what? The Purple Heart. Purple Heart is correct. You're going good. Let's get all three in the body systems. Let's finish out this run with a multiple choice. If you're playing sports and you injure yourself, and your body part is swelling up, your knee or your ankle, you can treat it with ice, which acts to reduce the swelling. That's because ice is an anti-inflammatory, an antipyretic, or an antihistamine. Which one is it? Should we go with number Antihistamine. Pyro is fire. Okay. Flame is fire. Okay. Antihistamine. Anti. An antihistamine is what you take when you're um, you're trying to reduce um, like your 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 sneezing or whatever. If you've got a cold, it's an anti-inflammatory. If it inflames, that's what causes that swelling. All right. You have 95 points, gentlemen. I know you're going to add to that tally when we get in the second half here. We'll see you guys in a moment. Keep up your good work. I like how you're playing. I like your shirts too. All right. We're back. Let's bring back that team from Bladensburg and find out a little bit more about our players and their school. Let's start with the captain there. Justin, this is your third year on Science, but why do you keep coming back? We love having you. Why do you do this? Um, the first year, it was because I, I wanted to learn more about science, and then I ended up getting in the first team. And the second year, I wanted to give it another go. And this year, I did it because it's my last year that I can do it, and I want to give Bladensburg um, one win. I think that's a great thing, and yeah, you're a you're a a, a great player, and uh, this can be your last year at Bladensburg, but you can play next year when you get to middle school. If you stay in one of our middle schools, you can play this game until you're in the eighth grade. So keep that in mind. It's always great to have you back with us here. Let's talk to your teammates. Let's go to Zacharias. Zacharias, you seem to know an awful lot of science, young man. How do you know so much science? <laughs> Um, we study a lot in at Bladensburg, and uh, like it's a fun, it's fun, it's a fun thing to do. We, we study, have fun, look around. It's, a, it's like a, it's like a small family. Uh, what a nice thing to say. Yeah, if, if if school was like a family, if you got a great teacher like Mrs. Holmes there, a great coach, uh, and you got great friends, which you do, how can you not like that school? And you're doing a great job here today. Keep it up in the second half. Let's talk to Salome. Salome, uh, nice to have you with us today. Why did you want to be on our show? Because I would like to know more about science. Absolutely. And hope you're learning more about science. That's one of our 
but purpose is here. We also like to know what you know, and you're already demonstrating that, that you know a lot about science. What are you thinking about doing someday if you've thought about a career? Um, I would like to be a pediatrician one day. Wow, that's very specific. Why'd you choose that? Because I would like to help children. Yeah, that's a wonderful, that's a noble ambition because, you know, as they always say, you know, children are our future. That may sound trite, but it is, and you've got to get them started on the right footing. What a nice, noble uh, aspiration. All right, Bladesburg, it's now time for your last nine questions. Let's get them all. Let's get them all. I know you can do it. Let's get physical for five points. Here we go. If actors in a movie or people in real life, they have a good relationship like you guys do with each other. It just seems to happen naturally. They're said, and you're said, to demonstrate this branch of science, usually associated with acids and bases and test tubes and beakers. That's all what? All part of what science? Um, I think it's chemistry. What do you guys think? I, I agree with Justin. I think it probably is chemistry because in chemistry, we, either like we don't do it yet, but like it's like um we do it, like test tubes and stuff like that, and in most movies and stuff like it looks that's what they do. Right, chemistry is the right answer, and chemistry also <laughs> defines when you have a good relationship with somebody else. You got good chemistry, you just click. All right, good start. I know you can get them. Fifteen points in physical. This gas with the formula C for carbon, H hydrogen for CH four is many times worse as a greenhouse gas than carbon dioxide. And it is very, very stinky. A reason why the planet Uranus, which is surrounded by the gas, is probably best avoided. Name that stinky gas with the formula CH4, a greenhouse gas. What do you think, Justin? Like, what is, what represent, what gas is CA4? CH, CH4. Oh, CH4. All right, I hear Justin, how you're saying something back there. Just remember to lean in so we can hear what you're saying. Do you have an answer for us, Justin? I guess. Not really, not really. The correct answer is methane. Methane. It's the same stinky gas that comes out of cows and uh, everybody else who releases gas. Let's do the 25 pointer and let's get physical. <clears throat> there was a movie called Alien. It was a horror movie. It took place in outer space. A famous line from that alien horror movie was in space. No one can hear you scream. That's true. Because sound requires the presence of air. In space, there is no air. It's described by what? V initial term. Do you guys think it's vibration? Yeah, I think so. Uh, I it's 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 like... Like oh, oh, oh. I think it's void. What do you guys think? I'm pretty sure it's void. I, I think it's vibration. The absence of air is a vacuum. A vacuum is when there's no air left. That's the B initial term we're looking for. Let's go to Pope Brief for five points. Legend has it that Santa Claus will fill the stockings of naughty boys and girls with a lump of this fossil fuel. I think it's cold. Yeah, it's, it's, That's it's right. Cold. It's cold. You got a lump of coal from Santa Claus. That knows you've been bad. You've been bad. 15 points. Let's get this one too. If you're in the kitchen and you're helping prepare dinner and you got some raw chicken, if you don't wash that cutting board where the raw chicken was, you can expose yourself and your family to this S initial bacteria that can make you sick. Um, I think it's, uh, I think it's, uh, I think it's a bacteria. I think, uh, like, turtles, I think, um, what do you guys think? Is it, is it sulfur acid? Is that what you're trying to say? No, it's not. It's, it's a disease. disease. It's, um, 
could it be symbiosis or something? No, that's, that's not a disease. That's a good try. That's a good try with the S there. Uh, if you watch uh, Sesame Street, there's a character. His name is Sal Manella. That's the bacteria, Sal Manella. He's named after that bacteria. Let's go to 25 points in potpourri. Last one in that category. If you watch hockey, you know that there's a team from Detroit called the Detroit Red Wings. It's well known because it's fans. They're sitting up there and they throw dead ones of these eight tentacled cephalopods onto the ice. A tribute to the eight wins it took them to win a Stanley Cup. An eight tentacled cephalopod, dead ones. They throw them on the ice. Yeah, it's octopus because octopuses are, um, most octopuses are red. Some of them can change colors, but most of them are red, and they have eight legs, because that's what octo means. It means eight. You, you got that right, Zacharias. Perfect answer. Octopus got you 25 points. Pat on the back time. Pat on the back. Zacharias, you get an assist. Dateline, last three questions, guys. Five points. A loud boom over the city of Pittsburgh recently was the result of one of these space objects exploding overhead. Could it be asteroid? Okay, come on, Captain. Let's let's be Captain. Give me an answer. You heard a couple suggestions. Come on, Justin. Which one? Uh, actually, it was a meteor. It was a meteor. Good try. Fifteen points. Dateline. Two questions left. Gordon Cooper was the last astronaut to solo in space, where he was the only one up there. When he flew in 1963 on the final flight of this NASA program, named for a fleet-footed god, also a planet. Um, what was the I, I think it's Jupiter because I know Jupiter is a god, but I don't know about fleet footed because like I know there's a god that like you know has like wings on his shoes. Is that what is that what fleet footed mean? I think the sun. No, it's, 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 it's planet. Sicarius, you I I love what you think. You were thinking about fleet footed, and fleet footed means that you're fast. And this god did have shoes with wings on his shoes, and his name was Mercury. Mercury was the fleet-footed god, and that's also the name of the planet. Boy, I wish I, I could have given that one to you because you, were, you, were, you had the right idea. Let's do the last question of the game, and I'm going to show you a picture. Luckily, if you have an operation today, it's different than this one. Joseph Lister a British surgeon, you see him there, has his name attached to a mouthwash, Listerine, and to a bacteria, Listeria, because he discovered this A initial procedure that keeps people safe from getting infections when they're being operated on. Yeah, probably amputation. Because like when you amputate a limb that's infected, it can't infect the rest of the body. So probably amputated. I agree. Have you ever heard of antiseptic? Antiseptic, antisepsis. Sometimes, you know, if you cut yourself, <clears throat> you put mercurochrome or some kind of antiseptic on your cut to keep it from getting infected. And that's what Joseph Lister came up with, antisepsis. So, People weren't dying of infections during their operations. Okay, 110 points. You'll end the game. Let's see if that's enough to get you into the next round. It could be. We'll see you guys in a few moments. Thanks for playing the game. Now time to welcome back that team from Mattapanai. Let's find out about our players and their school. Let's go first to the captain, Josh. Josh, nice to have you here. You've played this game before. Can I ask, why, uh, why do you come back? We love having you. Why do you do it? Well, I'd love to, and I like science because it makes me feel like I'm a mad scientist. 
<laughs> yeah, mad scientists aren't all that mad. They're just really passionate. That's my feeling about it. I like your sense of humor. What do you want to do someday, Josh? Have you thought about that yet? Well, I want to be a YouTuber that does things like do some really cool experiments and sometimes game. Yeah, be a, a star on YouTube. There's a lot of competition out there, but you know, you know they say if you build a better mousetrap, the world will beat a path to your door. You put a nice video up there, and uh, you can get eyes on there. You're doing a nice job. Keep it up in the second half here. Let's talk to Nigel. Hey, Nigel, good to have you here today. Tell me uh, about Mattapanai, Nigel. What's the best thing about going to school at Mattapanai? Probably the best thing about going to like the school at Mattapanai it's probably the teachers and like your friends most definitely boy that's i couldn't have said it better myself you know obviously you need caring teachers but you got to have friends there you got to have some bffs some people that you can share things with which is why it's great you're all back in school even though you're masked you want to be around your friends again let me ask you what i asked your your captain there what do you want to do someday i want to be an interior designer wow all right so you're going to be a very creative person yeah Always find a creative outlet, outlet in life. And boy, if it's if your job and they pay you for it, all the better. Good luck in the second half. Nice to have you back with us again. And Ricky, nice to have you back too. Tell us the Ricky story. What do you like to do in your spare time? Uh, I don't know. I like to do a lot of things, but uh, I really like doing different science experiments and stuff like that. Great. Have to ask you about your Science Bowl shirts. Do you guys get to keep those? Oh, yes. I still have the one from <laughs> last year. I mean, yeah, last year. That's great. Yeah, so those are keepers. And I hope you wear them with pride. Let people know you've been on the Science Bowl. They're going to be seeing you on YouTube as well. What do you want to do same day, Ricky? Have you thought about it yet? I have no clue. I keep on, like, thinking I want to be one thing, then change my mind. I turn decided. I don't know. That is absolutely normal, you know, and changing your mind and you're going to you're going to run into people. You're going to have opportunities that are going to change you and who knows what direction you're going to end up. But, you know, just uh, just have a good, strong work ethic and, uh, you know, a good character and uh, do your homework. You're going to be fine. Good. Good luck in the second half. Nice to have you back. All right, Matt, Panay, time for your last nine questions. Let's go to let's get physical for five points. Gentlemen, if you're ready, here we go for five points. A skateboarder's ramp is simply one of these simple machines known as an inclined what? Can I pass it to Nigel? Sure. What simple machine is a skateboarder's ramp? It is an inclined what? Ramp? No, I always use, I use that in the, the question. It's called an inclined plane, an inclined plane. That's what a ramp is. For 15 points, this is an interesting question, something you probably never thought about before. While much smaller and not as noticeable as those found in the oceans, these daily ups and downs caused by the moon's gravity also occur on the land, but they're much less noticeable. What do you guys think? Uh, weathering? Weathering? What does the moon, what does the moon's gravity yeah. do each day that produces ups and downs? Unmute yourself so we can hear what you're saying to each other. Uh, what is an idol? Uh, I'm sure, I'm sure you... You've heard, there's high tide. Ah, uh, high, high tide. High tide and low tide, yeah. And even the land goes up a little bit and down a little bit, but that's why I say it's hardly noticeable. Tides was the answer there. All right, 25 points. Let's get physical. Physical, let's get the big one here. The atomic number of a chemical element, like number eight for oxygen and seven for nitrogen, is based on the number of these subatomic particles in the atom's nucleus. Okay, what do you guys think? Roger, you got it. I think the atoms are nuclear. Hey. These questions are hard. Can you repeat the question? The atomic number of an element, 
Like if you look at the periodic table, do you see all those numbers up there and those symbols? Oxygen is symbol O, and it has a, an eight in there. That's its atomic number. That number tells you that there are this many of these subatomic particles in the nucleus of an oxygen atom. So I guess I'm asking, do you know what makes up an atom? What are the different particles? Do you know which one can be found in the nucleus? I know you know this term, guys. It's called the proton. There are protons and neutrons. And what are the ones that orbit the nucleus? The electrons. All right. Let's go on to Pope for five points. A slang term for this hardest and most expensive of minerals is ice. Diamonds. Diamonds. Diamonds, that's right. Yes, indeed. They made off. The robbers got all the ice. 15 points. Most people don't know they're eating fungus when they're consuming mushrooms, truffles, not the candy kind, and this fungus, which is used to make bread rise during baking. If you ever bake bread... What do you have to add to the dough to get that dough to rise? It's a kind of fungus. Oh, oh. It's called yeast. Ah, yeast. Yeast. Oh. yeast. Okay. All right, 25 points. This is not a one-word answer, and you're going to have to kind of think about what I'm saying here. Careful, guys. Cowbirds and cuckoos. They're both kinds of birds are known as deadbeat parents. They're terrible parents because they have a habit of doing this. They're called brood parasites because what do they do which makes them such terrible parents? They leave their eggs in the nest. You're close. You're close. Okay. Give me a little more info. Oh, they leave them to die in the nest because they send like a hawk or something? I don't know. Uh, can I pass it to Ricky? Sure. Come on, Ricky. Save the day. Can I pass it to Nigel? <laughs> Go ahead. Um. They lay because they leave their eggs in their nest. You know what you guys are missing? Whose nest? They lay their eggs in another bird's nest. So that other oh. bird on the eggs and hatches their babies and feeds their babies and they go flying off. That's what I said. They're terrible parents. Terrible parents. We think it's because those birds follow migrating animals like buffalo and all, and they aren't in one place long enough to raise a brood themselves. Still not very nice. All right, Dateline. Guys, you're going to have to get some points here if you want to win this game. Dateline for five points. Not realizing how dangerously radioactive polonium and radium were, this famous Polish scientist who won two Nobel Prizes died from radiation poisoning while experimenting with polonium and radium. We use this scientist on Science Bowl all the time. Won two Nobel Prizes. One in chemistry, one in physics. Uh, which one? Which one? Guys, it's really Hmm. Einstein? Not Einstein. She was Marie Curie. Marie Curie. Okay, 15 points is a picture. Let's look at the picture. To get people in Germany to get vaccinated, a farmer coaxed his sheep and goats to form the shape, you see them here, of this S initial device that is used to give injections. If you got vaccinated. Syringe. Syringe is right. Yes, indeed. Good for 15 points. All right, for 25 points, 
Astronomers recently witnessed the violent death of a red giant star, resulted in a boom, a supernova. Stars die when they run out of their fuel, which is needed for nuclear fusion. The fuel they run out of is two chemicals, number one and number two on the periodic table. Now, if you prepared for Science Bowl, you know we ask about chemical elements. I know you looked at that periodic table. If you can get number one and number two, you know the two fuels that are in a star. Unmute I, yourself. Uh, Here you. Uh, I, oxygen and nitrogen. Hydrogen and helium were the right answers there. Yeah. Hydrogen and helium. 115 points. All right, we'll see if that does it for you. We'll see you all with everybody in just a few moments. Okay, everybody is back. We've got principals out there. Principal Judith Houghton Williams. Uh, I don't know if uh, Mr. Green is out there from uh, Mount of Panay, Mrs. Coleman Warren and Mrs. Holmes. And we have lots of alternates out there. If you're an alternate, can you wave to us, please? Anybody who's an alternate. Nice to have you here. You're an important part of this game as well. All right. We had uh, some tough questions today and all of you played a nice game. And I liked how you thought and shared ideas. And a lot of times you were connecting dots and sometimes you came very close. And that's important. That's what scientists do. They form hypotheses, they make mistakes, and they get better and better each time. Our final tally today is Bladensburg 110, Mattapanai 115. So by five points, Mattapanai, congratulations. We will see you this afternoon, and you're going to be playing uh, Phyllis E. Williams for a chance to move on to the semifinals. And we thank all of you. We hope you had some fun and hope you brought some uh, some experience because I know some of you have been here with us before. If you're going on to middle school, come back and play with us again. We'd love to see you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you for watching Science Bowl and hope you'll tune in again next time. Until then, I'm Dave Zeri. Bye-bye.